So it's a very serious calling once we hear the voice of the master. And you can never put your hand to the sickle. You can never turn back, can you? You can never. Look at verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yahuwah, but the doers of the law shall be righteous. You see, knowing whether something is sinful or not is irrelevant. Knowing whether something is sinful or not is totally irrelevant. You're still going to be judged by the consequences of such sin. See, my whole life before I turned 24 was a life lived under the judgment of the consequences of sin. It was a whole life lived under the judgments of the consequences of sin. Yet I didn't have a knowledge of the scripture, but I still lived under the same judgment. Does that make sense? I was often unaware that what I was doing was gross sin. Often I was unaware because I was raised to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Meaning I would go out and I would eat of the tree of experimental knowledge of good and evil. I would try it. And then once I tried it, then I would decide whether it was good or bad. But the problem with that theology is once you have eaten of it, it comes into your heart, it comes into your soul, you've seen it, you've heard it, and you become morally corrupt. And after years of eating and eating and deciding, oh, I'm never going to do that again, but I had done it. And that was how I was raised. And when I got saved and converted, then I decided, aha, now I eat from a different tree. If only somebody had explained that to me when I was younger, I wouldn't have gone out and tried everything. Because I would have understood the reality of two trees in the garden. And if somebody could have told me that in Sunday school, and it had gone into my inner man, then what a different life that I would have lived. But the reality of it was that I had still eaten bitter fruit. And even though once I realized that the fruit was bitter, I had still digested it and it would still bring forth what? Death. And I ended up as a dead man. A dead man. Look at Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. Because at this point in the text, I want to look into... The Hebrew word sefer, the Greek word biblion, or our English word books. Because the life that we live here, we hope that is recorded in the right books. Correct? Let's look at Revelation 20 verse 12. I'll tie it through the scriptures back to our text in Romans chapter 2 verse 13. But it's very important that we understand the difference between the sefer, the biblion, or the books in the scripture. The dead, Revelation verse 12 of chapter 20, are all, the dead are all going to stand before Yahweh when death comes a knocking, are they not? And the books, they'll be opened. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, both small and great, standing before Elohim. And the books were opened. And then another book was opened which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Sefer Biblion Books. Turn with me to Exodus, Shemot, chapter 32, verse 31. Because we're going to connect these books. Because ultimately, the choice that you make will depend upon, and the life that you live will depend upon which books are brought out. And one set of books that are brought out will mean that you will be judged according to your works 
And you'll be judged according to what is written in those books. But if you make another choice, then you'll end up in another book. So this is very important when we're talking about works, faith, and the real conversion message that Paul is trying to address. Because there was Jewish pride that was going on and judgment of those in the nations. And he has to correct that erroneous thinking before he can continue on further with the community. So it's very important. Exodus chapter 32, verse 31. Now notice where the context of this is. Those of us studying the Malkit Zedek will know that this is after the golden calf breach. After the book of the covenant was broken. Look what happens. Then Moshe returned to Yahuwah and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin. And they have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book which you have written. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now therefore go, lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit for iniquity and punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. So when they violated the book of the covenant, they were infidels, they were unfaithful, and they broke the holy covenant. Then, when? Then we see these books come out, do we not? And look what Moshe says. Blot me out of your book, which is written. And then Yahweh says, I will blot him out of my book, whoever has sinned against me. So from this passage, we learn what leads one to being blotted out of this book. The breaking of the book of the covenant, right? They'd just broken the book of the covenant. And it led to them being blotted out of that book. This has got huge ramifications in light of our Messiah. 